everybody, I have another great case study with one of my mobile technicians that I'm going to share with you. He wanted to install a used PCM module and one thing I always tell my clients is to call me first so I can research to see if the functions we need to do the job are on the maxi -sys. So, you know, I don't want the client to buy the part, go to the his customer and you know he's trying to do it and it's not on the, the, the tool. He's gonna look like a bucket head. So fortunately, I found two of the functions that we're looking for and I'm gonna share with you what they are right now, all right? So I'm gonna show you how to write a VIN and also do mileage correction with the Maxisys Elite on a 2011 Dodge Journey. For those of you who are new to the channel, welcome. My name is Curtis Harden. I'm a diagnostic consultant and I sell this fantastic tool and provide the training and support that you're gonna see in this video. Now, what you're gonna to learn today, where to source your PCM module. Second, how to make sure you selected the right used PCM module. Third, the difference between coding and programming. People are still getting this messed up. I'm gonna clarify it. How to force write a VIN number. And lastly, how to adjust the mileage, all right? What we're gonna be using today is a Maxisys Elite tablet along with a used PCM module. So as you can see here, we got a beautiful PCM and I have a framework that I follow to decipher where I source the PCM, all right? So my very first option is the dealer. Now, some of you guys might not agree with this being the first option, but the reason why I like the dealer is because you're buying certainty, okay? I want to get the job done in and out. I want to know that my client is going to be well off after I fix his vehicle. Okay. So that's why I buy it from the dealer. Now, sometimes they offer remanufactured PCMs, which are a little bit cheaper and they, they still work really, really good. Now the downfall of the dealer, there's, there's three downfalls. Sometimes if it's an older vehicle, they might not stock that part anymore. Okay. Um, the other thing is, depending on the year make and model that PCM could be quite expensive okay and then third when you buy a new one that needs to be programmed and some people don't know how to do that or they don't have the right tools so if you know you can't do any of those options then I'll go to option number two which is buying a used module from a salvage yard now I find that as long as you get the right match these should work with no problem, okay? As long as you do, you know, your due diligence on it to see if everything is fine. I don't have any issues with these. Then my last uh, result would be the aftermarket. So a lot of my clients, they will actually skip the use uh, step and they'll go straight to the aftermarket. And the reason why I don't like them that much is because they give me the most headache. So I'll give you a prime example. This happened yesterday. Client had a Ford, uh, I think it was an F-150 2013. Um, he had a PCM module that he wanted to put on the vehicle. So I asked him, where'd you get this module? He was like, oh, Kurt, I got it from this company. They do these plug and play PCMs and I bought from them before, but uh, you know, they're pretty good. And I was like, oh man, I I haven't had good success with these things, but we'll give it a go. And all we were trying to do was a parameter reset and relearn the key. So we get in there, we do the, the parameter reset, and as I'm relearning the key, it's not like going through. So I said, let's do a diagnostic. So we did a diagnostic and there was a P1235 that came up, which it's something about the fuel pump control was out of range or there was a short circuit in it. And I was looking back at my video and I was like, you know what, the previous module didn't have that issue. So I said, you know what, I guarantee there's something wrong with that module. Like, nah, Curry, these are plug and play. So he did his due diligence. He was, you know, troubleshooting, getting the manual and all that other stuff. And four hours later, he's like, you know what, Kurt, I did everything. Everything went back and said that that PCM was faulty. So I was like, yeah, you know, and he was like, oh, I should have just got a, a brand new one. So that's why I'm not too high on the aftermarket. They, they, they sell it with something wrong with it. And remember guys, when you're trying to do a 
key relearning procedure, that PCM module needs to be clean. There can't be any uh, error codes in there, otherwise you won't be able to relearn the key, okay? So when you're selecting your PCM, it's not good just to go by VIN number, okay? What you need to do is also identify the part number because if you just give someone the VIN number, and I've even seen dealers do this, um, where you give them a VIN number, the, the, the hardware that they give you, they might have a different hardware level than your car. So it's not gonna be working properly, all right? So make sure you get the VIN number and the module part number. Now, the ways you can get the part number is, I purchased, I, I like to purchase um, like a day subscription through the manufacturer and under their parts menu, um, they'll have all the part numbers there, okay? And then that way you can cross-reference with whatever use module you wanna get. Another free option is if you go to any OEM online part supplier, um, you type in the VIN number on their website, go to, to the control modules, and you'll see the VIN numbers there as well. All right. Now, let's jump into the demo. Now, before I do, I, I want to just take a quick poll. How many of you guys think this is a programming event? All right. How many of you think it's a, if it's a coding event? All right. Don't cheat. All right, because I know I know when you guys are cheating. So let me clarify. Programming is when you have a blank module and you need to inject software from the manufacturer's website. So that's where you buy the subscription, you download it to your laptop, use a JBox to then program it. Coding is when you have a, like a, a, a use module like in our case. And what we're gonna be doing is, since it already has an operating system on it, we just need to configure it. We need to, to relearn it, adapt it. All those are, are under the coding umbrella. Okay, so to be clear, we're doing a coding procedure today. All right, now to remove the battery, disconnect and isolate the negative, negative battery cable. Unlock and disconnect the two electrical connectors at the PCM and remove the four bolts holding the PCM to the bracket and remove the PCM from the vehicle. All right, so now that I'm into the client's tablet, the very first thing that I love to do is just do a diagnostic scan. And I do this for several reasons. One, it just gives me an idea of the overall health of the, of the vehicle. And two, if we try to write the VIN and something goes wrong, I can always go click the data lodging option, send that to my engineer and they can tell me, hey Kurt, something's up with this module, or hey, there's something wrong with our software, we'll give you a patch to fix it. So always like to do that. So what we're gonna do now is, I'm gonna do a quick erase, just to see what we're working with. And then um, from there, I'm gonna go into the engine control module uh, to start writing the VIN, the power control module. So we're gonna go there, we're gonna click that button and see what we got. All right, so from here, we're gonna look under the special functions you see right at the bottom and there we're gonna look for the set VIN button which is on the bottom right hand corner okay now if you can look on the left you can see the VIN number it's incorrect it's 3d 4pg 4fb that's not the right VIN. so what we're gonna do is we're gonna fix it now here we put in the correct VIN number he types it in okay and all you do is press okay and you just get a confirmation you're gonna click yes then you're done not rocket science okay not rocket science now since this was a used module it has the mileage from the other vehicle so we got to get it to reflect what's on the vehicle now so that's what we're gonna do on this one is we're going to write the VIN, okay? So this function will write the current mileage into the new PCM, all right? So since we're in the US, we're gonna go by miles, so we're gonna click number one, all right? And then is, this, is the odor meter reading between, uh, we're gonna click no, just skip forward. 
no. And we press OK. And here we're going to put in their correct VIN number. Now, what I liked about this particular uh, diagnostic event was everything was like in fusion, meaning the client called me up, he booked his consultation, I did the research, uh, called him at the appointed time, and you know we got in there, got out. His customer was happy, he didn't have to buy a new module. Um, we saved you know a bunch of time and then more importantly you know my, my client got paid so um, it was a really really great pleasure to do this procedure with him all right that's it you guys now what I want you to remember VIN writing and mileage correction are vehicle specific okay so for those of you trying to do your research I don't want you to see this video and be like oh it ought to this VIN writing it does, but it's not like something extremely strong, it's especially on the mileage correction, okay? Sometimes I have to use the J254 and do methods to write the VIN. Other times I have to use third-party software to you know, write the VIN and even mileage correction. That, that's a whole nother industry. So it's, it's VIN specific and that's why I'm saying it's good to just know before you go. Find out before you go if the tool has that capability for that VIN number, okay? Next, make sure you match the PCM by the correct year, make, and part number. Don't just do it by the VIN because you might have a different hardware level, okay? Lastly, if it's a brand new module, it requires a programming procedure with the J254 and OEM subscription, okay? If it's a used module, this requires coding and configuration procedure that can be done with the MaxiSys Elite. All right, so if you're a mobile mechanic and you want me to give you this type of you know, assurance when you're programming or encoding, go to my website, book a consultation. We'll find out which tool is right for you and then I can sell you the tool and I can render the support. With that guys, that's it. I got another video coming out soon. So comment, like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, bye.